So tell me, when you took EST and wh what prompted you to, to take it? I was at a point where I had was working very hard as a university president and uh, was um, a f had this what they call politely a, th a coronary event in London when I was staying with friends. Mm -hmm. And another friend of mine from the U.S. came over about that time and she said, okay, Warren, you got to do it now. You got to understand what's been going on in your life. And I thought it was a, an incredible experience. And in a way that it would be hard now 25 years later, more than 25 years later, um, to really recount exactly what it was, was not so much the openness to myself as much as it was to the admiration of my the collective beings who were with me and their generosity. That was one big thing. The generosity, the, un, the ocean of affinities that are opened up as a result when you see people with from so many different backgrounds, so many different languages. And I fell in love with the, the ocean of wonder that it opened up and the collectivity of people. Second thing, which seems strangely different, it was, I, I was very impressed with the structure of it, with the technology of it, with the lines along, with, you know, at this hour you do this, at this hour you do that. I loved, I loved the, um, <laughs> the very structure of the, and the foundation for learning in this carpeted, characterless hotel room on Piccadilly in London. That impressed me. And what are the ideas, the, <laughs> the distinctions, the, the distinctions that really hit home for you? Well, the, bi the biggest one, of course, is, is um, the thing that in highfalutin academic circles they call agency theory. You know that word? It's a very interesting word. What it means, it's a very American word in a way. Agent, agency, it means, um, it has something to do with being alive. It has something to do with, may I say it, taking responsibility. It has something to do with uh, the idea of, that you make the, you actually create your wonder. You act, that's the, the word agency. You are, you are the author of your life, and if you want to have a life, you better start writing one. That's the first thing. If you want a life, you better start writing it, because you're the, you're the author. The word author is the root of the word authority. You have to be the authority of your life, the agent of your life. I'm impressed and in admiration of so much that uh, Warner's teachings have, have done for so many thousands of people to give them that, that nudge to write their own stories. For me, the technology of S has to do, the, the, the single part of the technology has to do with making individuals um, goose them into making the changes they've always wanted to make but never did. And along with that is seeing that they're not lonely, that there are other people with under, who, are, who are actually on the same path searching for um, more understanding of themselves and what they can do with their life other than just die or live a life you know, just dying on the installment plan day by day by day. A word, I use the word goose or jolt or shock or, or unfreeze because habit is a great deadener and most people are, are chained by habit and too often a last successful habit. And I think where, where the work of Werner really comes in handy is by getting people to understand we're not trapped in our silos. And we do not have to conceal. We do not have to play games. We are in this because, as I said about, because if we want to, the reason we are together is to achieve a goal. And I think what the transformative essence of Earhart's work as it applied to corporations is exactly making people more capable of taking risks and dealing with and opening up all those blinkered shutters that make up most of our organizational life. And 
the, the substrate of all of Est's and Erhard's work has the substrate of it, the very foundation of it, has to do with opening up, opening up boundaries in silos, opening up boundaries within oneself, opening up boundaries with other individuals. That's what it's all about. Where Werner's genius is, to me, is the technology that makes the change from the abstraction into behavior. There is, there is always a concern with especially highly cerebral, intellectualized, it's, I mean, it's really bimodal. If you take a guy like Mike Jensen, who's just incredibly brilliant and far beyond anybody I know in terms of his capacity to make abstraction, or Werner for that matter, has a philosophical mind that I don't really, I can't fully comprehend. That's not false modesty. I think I'm plenty smart. But in a way, I think Werner, while he may not agree with this, uh, has created the technology, not uniquely American, but certainly has its roots here, that has. Uh, unleash the possibilities of being human. That's a legacy.